what Malaysia needs. It's such a big topic that you could say almost anything and it would fit. For instance, you can talk about the rule of law or uh, corruption or uh, our police or uh, brain drain. Do you know, for instance, that in the last 18 months alone, that 350,000 Malaysians emigrated? Staggering. That's roughly 1% of the population of this country just upped and left in 18 months. That's about 60,000 households whose main income earner is likely to be skilled, educated, traveled, read, qualified, and so on. People like yourself. People that this country cannot afford to lose. Yet they just upped and went. We can talk about education. We can talk about freedom of speech, religion, Allah. Or we can talk about something fun. We can talk about the, the arts, censorship. <laughs> now, censorship is always fun because that's Raya's Yatim's territory. <laughs> <laughs> Raya's is really fun. <laughs> that's right. Now, do you know that if you were a foreigner looking at Malaysian films, and you've never been here, you think that we're, we, are, we us Malaysians are a bunch of morons. You know why? Because you think, oh, f they don't fuck. <laughs> Although, they do have gay people. <laughs> but they all repent at the end of the movie. Huh? Yeah. It's strange. It's a strange country we have. Hope. Something that my late friend Yasmin Ahmad spent a whole career doing, which is to make f uh, films about hope. About Malaysia that could be and should be. And in my experience in the last few years, I've come across so many instances of hope. For instance, the sheer mass of people that came to the 15 Malaysia website to watch our films. We had 15 million visits in 60 days. We were transmitting one terabyte of data every day. You almost bankrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the signs of hope that so many people are interested in our stories, the stories of our own country. The other signs of hope, I mean, two years ago, I, I produced um, a music video called Here in My Home. that involved about 50 artists from across all our communities in Malaysia. And at the end of the shoot, this rather well-known, very well-known Malay artist came up to me. Tears in his eyes, give me a big hug. And he said, Pete, thanks so much for inviting me. Because, you know, I've had 20 years in this industry, and I've never felt as close to my countrymen as today. Then he said, what the heck? What the heck have we done to this country? 
That's another sign of hope. The other signs of hope, I mean, did you see Chong Wei win the All England title? I mean, did you see him on television? You did, right? Now, as he held aloft his trophy, what I was interested in wasn't him. Sorry, Chong Wei. What I, what I was not in, what I wasn't interested in was him. I was interested in what's happening behind him. Did you see all those people, all those Malaysians? Different color, different religion, probably voting different parties if they do vote. <coughs> all with pride shining in their eyes. All at one. That's hope. Or we can talk about uh, just us here today. Through the miracles of the internet, we have people here who have taken uh, a Saturday off to come and learn about their country to come and commune about our country. That's another sign of hope. So if you imagine, on that night I was pacing, thinking of these things about hope, organizing them in my head and uh, thinking, oh, well, you know, that's quite cool, that's quite funny, always bring in rice because it's funny. And then a name popped into my head and I had to stop. I had to stop because I had to sit down. You see, we live in a country where political aid of an opposition politician could be dragged into the offices of the anti-corruption agency on the grounds of some very dubious corruption investigation. He was grilled for nine hours straight through the night and when morning came he was found dead. Nine floors below the, the offices where he was interrogated. There were strangulation marks around his throat his trousers were torn. The authorities tried to claim that it was suicide, although he was due to be married the very next day. His name was Teo Beng Ho, and we live in the same country. I had to sit down because I began wondering if he too thought about hope just before he hit the ground. I think it was about 6 o'clock in the morning when I decided to give up. Too much. Everywhere you see, we see signs of abuse. Signs of dilapidation. Signs that <coughs> Malaysia is in trouble in so many ways. Signs that we are in trouble. But just before I gave up and went to bed, I recall a conversation between myself and my old man when I was a little boy before the Crimean War. <laughs> Where he said, Son, when you grow up, there'll be times when the world closes in and everything around you, all the troubles will seem completely insurmountable. 
and you want to give up. It is in this time, she said, that rather than striding forward, you must shorten your stride into baby steps and if you make a lot of baby steps one day you look up and you look behind and you find that you'd have traversed an entire continent. It was then that I knew what I must come to talk to you about. It was then that I knew that the smallest baby step that anybody can make when you're faced faced with the sort of trouble we're in is what we should talk about today. And in the context of what we're talking about today, what Malaysia needs, that smallest baby step is for everybody here and everybody in the country to vote. I know it's not very sexy, <laughs> but let me explain why. See, the vote is the most fundamental right and obligation that a citizen has in a democracy. In fact, it defines the democracy. It is also the most fundamental intellectual and emotional investment you can make for your country. It's a very simple thing. There's an election, you go to the ballot box, you cast a vote in favor of the candidate whom you think best represents you in the highest lawmaking body of the land. And in doing so, you express your will about what sort of country you want to live in. And just like those little baby steps I talked about just now, the vote is magical. You know, each step doesn't take you very far. But each step is crucial because a lot of them take you an awful long way. And the vote, in the context of what we're talking about today, is also the most direct form and the easiest form for a normal citizen to enforce and to promote reform in this country. So when I said we are in trouble, I don't just mean that we are confronted with all this rubbish that we, well, we know so well, but also that we're in trouble because when people are faced with a sea of problems, the instinct is to give up, like I almost did. Now you give up in many ways. Some emigrate, some think about emigration. We've all been there. I have. And others turn inward, become cynical, become negative, become apathetic, and refuse to participate in anything to do with the country's public realm, like voting in a general election. As of today, Malaysia has 15 million people who are qualified to vote. You have to be over 21. That's it. That's the only condition. 
of these 15 million people, 4.4 million have not yet registered to vote. Now what's scary is this, of these 4.4 million people, two-thirds, two-thirds are between the age of 22 and 30. The same age group that you think will be the driving force of progress, of reform, and of advanced progressive thinking in the country. Yet, about 3 million of these people have not registered to vote. So here we are talking about what Malaysia needs. Malaysia needs a lot of things. We all know that. But you know, the smallest, most fundamental need that Malaysia can claim from you is your loyalty and your sense of ownership of the country. This loyalty and se uh, sense of ownership as expressed by a very simple act of voting. An act that declares to your friends and family and the world out there that I am willing to participate in the shaping of this country's future and her destiny. A simple act that says, I am willing to help contribute to building this country into a country that we deserve. So, will you promise me this? All of you. That when this is all over, today is over, you will go home, and if you already are a registered voter, will you promise that you will tell your friends and family, those who, have, who may not have registered yet, to do so? And if you are one of those who have not yet registered, would you promise me that you will do so as soon as possible, like Monday? <laughs> <laughs> will you? Yes. Do all of you make that promise? So ladies and gentlemen, all I'm trying to say is this. <coughs> Malaysia needs a lot of things. But what Malaysia needs most <coughs> right now, ladies and gentlemen, is you. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs>